Hey guys, it's Maggie and I am back today and we are going to be changing an ostomy bag. We're going to be applying a new appliance. If you didn't see the previous video on where I remove an old appliance, please go in the description and find that video. But I'm making this video geared towards nurses as well as patients so that way there can be a better partnership between the two when it comes to post-op stoma care. I know that it can be nerve-wracking to change a stoma. They tend to be a little bit unpredictable as you'll see in this video, but if you have the knowledge, you'll have the confidence to change one. So hopefully this will get you geared up if you're a brand new nurse um, or a seasoned nurse who just hasn't had a lot of experience with stomas. Hopefully this makes you a little bit more comfortable. All right, I've got my new towel protecting my pants. If you saw the last video where we talk about removing an old appliance, we had a little bit of an explosion, but that comes with the territory of changing ostomy bags. So be prepared. I have a little bit of tissue paper covering my stoma right now just because it suddenly got active. This happens. So I'm prepared, make sure you are. To expedite this process a little bit because my stoma is getting pretty active here, I'm going to use the products that I would recommend on myself. I see a little bit of skin irritation, so I think I'm gonna use some stoma powder, skin barrier, and I'll get my new appliance on. And then we'll talk a little bit about different products that are available and what they're used for. Also, it is okay to touch a stoma with tissue paper or whatever, you may notice a little blood come off of that because intestines are very, very perfused. They have a lot of blood in them. So it is not uncommon for them to bleed. It is usually harmless unless you see a lot of blood, but you may notice a little bit of spotting of blood on tissue paper. I actually see it myself. That's why I just thought of it, but it's okay. It'll heal up very quickly. Usually stops bleeding pretty quick. Gosh, I can feel my stoma like trying to trying to talk, that's how I say it. So I see a little bit of irritation above my stoma here, and I do see that little area of granuloma. You can use a little bit of stoma powder for this. I'm just gonna put some tissue paper on my stoma. Um, basically, I will put a very light layer on the area of irritation, directly on it, before I put skin barrier on it, so that way it's directly on that affected skin, and you want the lightest dusting of it, because the more powder you add onto the skin, the less the new flange is going to stick to it. If your patient has no irritation, there's no reason to use stoma powder. I know some people put stoma powder all the way around the stoma, and that's just going to affect how well the next bag sticks to them. So if you don't need it, don't use it. I'm going to add a little bit of stoma powder just above my stoma, like I said, and then on that granuloma area, actually I see some irritation underneath of my stoma and that's important too. For the patient who's looking down at their stoma, it's important to remind them, hey, look underneath of your stoma too. And it can be helpful for them to do this in the bathroom mirror so they can see in front of them what's going on underneath of their stoma. I'm gonna add a little bit of powder underneath here. And my fun little tip is to get the air to the top of the bottle and use it to brush away extra stoma powder. All right, stoma, that's enough output. <laughs> Now, oftentimes in the hospital, you're gonna have skin barrier wipes. If you've got spray, amazing. That's a really good way to get an even coat of skin barrier. And I always recommend skin barrier because it offers that extra layer of protection to the skin, whether it be from the effluent or if the patient has issues with adhesive, they might get a little bit of irritation from that. Sometimes skin barrier, a nice little layer of that, is all they need to protect their skin. Usually in the hospital though, we have skin barrier wipes. I have to keep switching out my toilet paper, so just make sure you've got a lot of it. If you've used a little bit of stoma powder around the stoma and you have a skin barrier wipe, you wanna make sure that you're dabbing it onto the skin, pressing that powder in, really giving it a good seal. You don't wanna just wipe all that powder away after you put it on with the skin barrier wipe. So I'm gonna gently press this into my skin, let it dry, and then we're gonna place the new appliance. I have pre-cut my appliance. 
I am very good at eyeing my stoma and knowing how to cut it, but there are templates that come in most ostomy flange boxes that will help you measure the stoma. And then once you find a really good fit, once you've cut a really good bag, you're gonna wanna hold on to the backing from that old flange and use that as your template for future ostomy bag changes. And you can tape it to the box, you can tape it on the wall at the hospital, whatever your hospital allows you to do. Also, you'll notice that I placed my barrier ring right around the stoma on the actual flange. Some people put it on their skin, I prefer to put it onto the flange. I find I have a little bit more control with it that way, um, but some people just prefer to do it the other way. If you're using something like a tube paste, I definitely recommend doing it onto the flange rather than onto the skin, because usually the tube paste you're using more than once and just to maintain some little bit of cleanness. I'm gonna put on my skin barrier and then I'm gonna get this ostomy flange on there quick. So I'm gonna press right around the stoma, being careful, because sometimes that can activate the stoma a bit, and then go outwards to press on that new flange, and then I'm going to click my bag into place. And you should audibly hear a click when you click on that bag. All right, now that we're in the safe zone here, I can take this towel off, pull up my pants a little bit. <laughs> This definitely makes it a little bit easier to talk to you guys. But there are a variety of different ostomy pouches available. Um, your main brands are gonna be Convitec, Coloplast, and Hollister. You might see Symed um, or Marlin. But I would say probably the two most common in the hospital are Coloplast and Hollister. This here is a Hollister appliance. Um, I'm gonna show you a few different brands and some different features of them so it can help you pick products for your patient if your WOCN has not done that. And you may notice that while I'm talking, I'm gonna be holding my bag on with my hands. This is something you can have your patient do um, just to play an active part in their bag change. But the heat from their hands can help kind of mold that bag, that new flange to them. It kind of picks up the adhesiveness and helps it stick to them better. One feature about this Hollister flange that I like is the fact that it has a floating ring. You can see I can get my thumb underneath of the ring here to click on a new bag. Some do not have floating rings, so I'll show you an example of that. This is a Convitec flange. This does not have a floating ring, so I can't really get my hand, I can't get my finger underneath of the ring, so when I put on a new bag, kind of helps you click the bag on. When you don't have that floating ring, it can make a two-piece bag application a little bit more painful for the patient because you're putting the flange on and then you're putting the bag on top of it and having to really push down on the skin to get the bag to click to the flange. So sometimes with two-piece applications, you may wanna actually click the bag on ahead of time and then place the whole system almost like it was a one piece system. That'll help reduce the pain. The only difficulty with that is you gotta kinda aim the stoma through the hole. Uh, if you've got a clear bag, then it's easier, but if you don't have a clear bag, you know, you're kinda having to look down the patient's stomach to be able to place that ostomy appliance on. So these are things to think about. If the patient's having a lot of pain around their stoma, either click that bag onto it prior or you know use a one piece or something like that this is an example of a one piece clear ostomy bag a lot of times like i said i think in the previous video um, you're gonna find clear bags after surgery or at least an opaque bag that has a window this is a convitec clear ostomy one piece this is a coloplast this is actually a two piece with a nozzle drain for your ostomy patients, um, but it actually has a window despite it being an opaque bag. It's got a nice little window here so you can take a peek at the stoma. Very helpful after surgery when you're trying to monitor the color of the stoma. This here is an opaque one-piece ostomy bag. Again, it's 
It's got a nice little window to see into the stoma. Um, I personally, as a patient that is far removed from my surgery, I prefer the ones that have not only opaque fabric over the bag, but opaque plastic. I find that, you know, you can't really see the output through it. A problem that some patients tend to have is that, you know, when they go swimming or they shower and their ostomy bag gets wet, that fabric gets wet, you can see right through it and see all their output. But these are all available items that the patient can kind of explore when they get home and you can help them explore it a little bit in the hospital too. There are many options that are available to patients. There's always new products and as a nurse, you can encourage your patient to look into what's available for their stoma care. There are belts, there's uh, specific underwear, there's lingerie, there's just a whole world of stoma products made by clinicians and by patients. So highly recommend that because I know a lot of patients can feel like I have no help. But yes, I hope that this video helped you in how to change an ostomy as a nurse and as a patient and uh, you feel a little bit more comfortable in caring for one. As the nurse, you need to work with your patient and as the patient with a stoma, work with your nurse, help them learn as much as you can about your stoma, become comfortable with it. It's not scary. Stomas are resilient and they help a lot of people live full lives like myself. All right, thank you so much for watching and if you'd like to see how to remove an ostomy bag, I will link that video in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next. Bye.